problem is the um the sort of getting people to have a broad enough scope of what you can do like he's like you can do this little thing you can do this little thing i'm like no you can do all of those things <laughs> yeah like you have to do all of those things or yeah. else it's it's not fun like um so anyways the the the, the like technical practical version of this here is like Sorry, sort of describe, I can talk to him about like how the tech stack works to a degree from the media side of things because he's worked with so many medias in the like guts of the, the material, um, like in the bits effectively. And so I walked him through the like the doodle format, right? And a, a shape of this thing is starting to emerge, right? Like where we're all working in like NFT medias, right? The, and I was just telling John like, there is a concept of F NFTs as a thing now to people. And more and more, I believe that that, na that namespace is going to become like salient to people. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about it in terms of like doing NFT material sciences or something like this, where we are working with like exposing the ability to write and read and create Combine within this Remix. material. Yeah. And then having like a sort of foundation or a, you know, whatever, a, a sort of working, uh, like we, we, we have agreed to sort of come together and, and create protocols that, that we are sharing out as a concept. We just happened to onto them first. That doesn't mean that we should define them any more than, you know, so anyways, there, the, the, the different medias can be like doodling is a format that has a media that can be inter like related in the relational like OS system. Um, and I was like, what is the 3D version of this to him? And there's probably a bunch of these, but the particular thing that he has been working in that is super lightweight is Pixar's like 3D format. Um, I think it's, I forget what it is already. Something ends with DZ. Um, but it's like just lightweight pointers for rigs and models and stuff like this easily uh, enough that you could just write it mm. straight to chain. Um, so like he started coming up with like toy ideas where you could have a little toy modeler, like front end, change the things or whatever, and then push them through onto chain, right? It's the simplest, smallest idea. And then I was trying to get him to be like, okay, so yeah, you could create an entire ecosystem obviously of doing this stuff. Um, gave him the pre-press idea, kind of, and then uh, basically talked to him about the structure of coming at these things as best suited when you can come up with a few component trees on a format and then present it as a game so that you can see how the format actually works in practice. And then people will come along and build it with you, for you, yeah. on top of it, you know. So, so anyways, th these sort of structures. And Kristen also had an idea related to loot. Um, which she can talk about basically like a writing game, like with prompts based on the loot and these kinds of things. And we would need to do a similar system to build text blocks, to take in the games, you know, these kinds of things. So anyways, <laughs> it's, well, there's yeah. a bunch of, yeah. The loot stuff has become uh, so much not fun to work with in the past few days. Really? Oh. Yeah. Uh, Cause really I mean, interesting. Yeah. All of it's so fascinating to watch real time. Um, hmm. Cause uh, I mean, all the, 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 the DAO that created that adventure gold currency that was airdropped to everybody where they, they put me into the multi-sig and I was asking those questions that were ignored um, are now exactly the same questions that the community is asking of like, who determined that this should be the thing and like, well, how do we include other people? Like, we don't have a government. How is this the governance token of anything? Um, and like the, the people that are working on it are all like so well-intentioned, so incredibly smart. And yet the, the, the idea of like actually getting input from the community before leading with the decision is just like not something that it seems to register. Um, despite how intelligent and well-meaning like you know everybody in the space is so now it's just like everybody has their own kind of like incentives and, and their own kind of motivations and everybody's fighting about how to like 
they, they pushed up the more loot thing, which is like an inflationary kind of version of loot that anybody can get. And there, there keeps being new ones every 10 Ethereum blocks. And so now they're like, how do we give them gold? Do they get silver? Do they get, do we inflate the gold value? So there's like a hundred different proposals happening in a hundred different places. Everybody thinking that their place is where the main conversation is happening. So like Discord or the forum or crypto Holy Twitter. Um, it is an absolute mess. Uh, and it's been interesting, like that there's been some other things that have popped up. So like Dom, Dom, I think is very sensitive to this stuff. So in one of the channels, he's like, you know, all the writers are, are like not enjoying this anymore. I think the creative tech people are going to be next. Like we need to figure this out um, or just like get completely hands off on it. But I'm at the point now where I'm just like, I don't know how to build on top because like the foundation layer is everybody just arguing and fighting. Um, so all you can do it just kind of spread out further wide and like just do dumb stuff and you know hope that it people laugh at it or enjoy it a little bit um but yeah it's it's fascinating but it's also just like oh this is so much less fun than it was three or four days ago i mean it's funny how fast it's turning over yeah, yeah. Like, i mean these like, are the these are the life cycles on these things down. yeah yeah I mean, I was kind of hoping for like, you know, th there's the, the hype cycle thing of like the goes up and then there's the trough of disillusionment yeah, yeah. or whatever. I do think that the trough of disillusionment is the, the good place for, for a project mm, like yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. takes away all of like the, the short term money interests who are yeah. like, oh, this thing is going to get a moon and we got to get in on it early and mm -hmm. build it out to, towards our vision, which is like what was happening, I think, was that there were you know, again, very experienced, very intelligent people, but coming into a community run thing kind of authoritatively. Mm -hmm. And then as the community is building excited, you know, like being able to connect, like, like even me and Scott, like who didn't know each other a week and a half ago. Now we're, we're like talking about project stuff all day. Like you're taking that stuff away from like the ground up kind of approach that people are actually really enjoying. And that's what built that momentum in the first place. So it's an interesting balance because at the same time, had somebody from the ground up tried to do that currency, it wouldn't have worked because you need that experience. You need that, that like intelligence to, to go and do that. So I don't know what the right approach would have been, but it, it's basically at the point now where people are trying to figure out, hey, do we have a government or no? Um, wow. Yeah. It's a, it's, a hard, it's a hard question to answer. Like <laughs> a lot of people have like different answers to that. <laughs> it's like, oof. It's, it seems like it's kind of at least like as far as I can tell is like split the community in, in a certain way where there's like a lot of like more community people that are like what is there a government for there doesn't need to be a government for this yeah and then the other government people are like fuck yeah government and you're like <laughs> we're in we can't power. have two and, governments and, yeah and it, it's, it's almost like like from the beginning the community would have to say like we will not recognize any government until yeah we, there to be a government as a community instead right. of like a few people in power that say like these VCs or whoever, like, I don't know. Or like, you're good. I, I don't know. I, I guess it, it almost seems like there's this, I maybe it's like a little bit too generic or broad, but like the split between VC and just like normal community builder people, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally different relationships to what is going on. And usually money doesn't know how things are actually made because their role is so different, like it, like the, the money portion of it. And that changes with Web3 because like the money is more integrated. You don't really need external like funds to get something started. It can grow on its own. So new dynamics, yeah. And like the, I mean, the same way a year and a half ago, everybody, all the VCs and like, you know, wealthier folks became like virus experts, everybody is now a game design expert. It's so yeah. silly. Oh, I know how to do that. And you're like, no, you don't, but okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, well, there's like a new style of, of, it's like democracy being reinvented, right? Like there's a new like condition for like participation in these environments, which means a new style of collaborative structure needs to emerge and i mean this is the I, I need to go back and read that legitimacy thing that vitalik was talking about like how, how do you determine who is legitimate in a, a legitimate actor within the system like what is what is 
And when you're growing one of these things, what are the types of minimal structures that you can put into place to be able to, to, to coordinate? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, this one, like there's a loose goal of like kind of creating a, a playable metaverse kind of thing. Is that the vision, right? Like, because this stuff without vision becomes, it just, it oozes out. So yeah, yeah, interesting. So it's the visionary vision types are, they, they're like politician types effectively, but different, like part politician, part like sort of, I don't know, creator. They have to understand this. They have to understand the money part of it. They have to understand, it. yeah, there's some role in there. Uh, and they need to get I, out of the way though. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, what's funny is that it's uh, literally like venture capitalists, like in, in their own title, you have a capitalist in the, the name are the ones who are saying, no, we need to set up a stronghold. We need to set up the bank of the church, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> as opposed to yeah. letting the market, the people actually building the stuff decide what is going to matter to the users. Um, yeah. Which kind of, you know, it's kind of showing what the game really is there. It's, it's having yeah. control early on and then maintaining it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, they literally build moats, yeah. and, but moats don't work here. People just walk around them. They're like, I'm uninterested in your castle. Your castle's boring. <laughs> like, uh, I yeah. don't need your castle. We'll go over but they're here. like, the castle's worth a lot of money. Well, who cares? We'll right. go over here and play another game that yeah. is about loot and it has nothing to do with you and it's going to have its own value and you can't stop us from doing that you can't play over there i mean maybe <laughs> that would be interesting to see i'm gonna i'm gonna share one screenshot in the current squawk and i'm gonna delete it but i'm glad i didn't quit that that private channel because this was very exciting mm -hmm. to see it's like a little bit of history being made i got chills whoa. reading it whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, I get to see this happen. That's or at least insane. this message, yeah. Right, I'm gonna delete it though, because I feel bad. Wait, wait, I haven't long. read it. I oh, sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry. Opening my oh, wait a minute. Discord slowly. <laughs> uh, Discord always takes a long time to open. Ooh, weird. Oh, that's cool. All right, can I delete it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, delete it away. <laughs> <laughs> It feels like a movie. <laughs> mm -hmm. So odd. Yeah. I mean, it's a small world. <laughs> so. Yep. Yeah. I mean, this is the, the. Yeah. Like, how do you, how do you get communal buy-in? How do you build legitimacy? So that as groups, as people, you can like how do you build trust and and like you know like people are then willing to offer like sort of work and uh, like service in and around the types of things that you're building knowing that that like i mean ethereum has achieved this right like this is why i mentioned vitalik all the time because whatever he has done like he is he has offered a, a, a like a playground wherein he is important but not becoming less and less essential, I think, yeah. um, which, and, and then it is, it is decentralized. Uh, the, the power of the ability to play is decentralized amongst a lot of smart people who are willing to play and then the results can, can appear. So it's this, and if at any point that stuff was locked up or the toys were put away and it, like something was gate kept or whatever, the thing would not work. So right. things that try to do that within the system, are breaking the flow of the system. So, but there still need to be governance structures. There still need to be coordination mechanisms. Like these are problems to solve with the media that we're sitting in now, like with the, the, the style of play. So it requires some level of like creativity here and like going back to another, I mean, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, the field of play is making more sense now. Um, it, these games are the way you goof with this stuff. You just, yeah. you create it's some little about, thing to run yourself into a problem. Yeah, it's all about the small experiments and like games yeah. are a nice way to like encapsulate that. But time and time again, you have, there has to be, this is the tantric sutric thing. Like you have to like explain how something works potentially, but give in that there's an invitation to do something with it, to enact it. Because if you just give people 
a read on this is how the thing works. Like they need to play with it. They need to get into it and like do something with it. So making things with it and having that be part of the, like for Ethereum, that's part of, I don't know, the ethos, like come fuck around with it. Like this is the place where developers build dApps basically. And that's sort of what it is right now. So within that, like if that's the foundational culture, that seems to be propagating out of Ethereum over and over and, and different like incantations, which is makes it fun. It's evolving and we're learning slowly, like as a community, slowly, quickly. Yeah, it's that it has to be pretty invitational. Like if it's gate kept, then the whole thing falls apart. Like that's the, the very nature of it is trying to like enforce that. Not enforce, uh, maybe um, like uh, enact. Yeah, you can try to do like very gatekeepy things in Web three, but you're sure. probably like not going to get as far as somebody who like goes into it with a sharing open first approach. Yeah, I, think I mean, my my hope is that that latter approach just is more fun than the gate kept approach because the gate kept approach can be valuable and it can pool resources. And if you need a lot of resources and you care about that, then you can get rich doing that. But getting rich and then having nobody to play with is the worst. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. get rich I mean, and play. I, I, yeah. I think there's like a hybrid a little bit too, right? We're like, yeah, Vitalik built a tech that anybody can do anything with. Or he designed it and, and like pushed it out into the world. Um, but he did, he has a consistent kind of set of values that he tries to get across anytime he talks about the tech. Like it's very much about, you know, uh, automating away the companies and, and more direct control and ownership, et cetera. All these things could be used for ulterior motives. And, and it, there's probably like forks that, that attempt that. But his his ability to kind of be like a guiding force and like just I yeah. don't know put like bumpers up on the in the bowling alley or whatever to kind of keep things on track. I think that's that's the difference between what's going on with loot right now, which is like people mm. saw like oh this is community run. I can come in and own you know a yeah. whole bunch of this because we're so and so and we have all this money and we have all this expertise, et cetera, et cetera. And like people just don't want to play that play around that way. Whereas like no. Dom's now like kind of trying to figure out what the, it seems like trying to figure out what the balance is of like, how much do I guide? Is that me being pushy about certain things where that wasn't the intent? Um, so that being said, it seems like a lot of the noise and like just chaos right now could have been prevented had had like Dom been more like, hey, my intent is that people use mm. things the specific way. Yeah. We, we want things to be accessible. Like yeah. had, he, had he said from tweet number one, I want people to build like, you know, very accessible games that many people can play would that have been slightly different in terms of where things had gone? Mm. But right now what's mm. happened is like, now a lot of people have this stuff and it's become like a significant, you know, percentage of their net worth all of yeah. a sudden over like the course of 10 days. And like, they're yeah. treating it very differently than, than they would mm. just like, here's a fun game piece. Yep. So yeah, the, the it's a minimum viable philosophy. Yeah, like, something like that, yeah. Because if you, if, if, the person who, 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 or persons, group of people, like who found one of these things will have some intention for the thing that is being expressed. Like it's, it's impossible not to have that, that bias. And so if that's delivered, at least in its, its most interoperable form, like its slimmest form with like directionally, this is how the thing is, is produced. Yeah. And like, if you, play in that arena like things will work a little bit better that doesn't mean you can't fork it that doesn't mean that there aren't like hidden ulterior things that that will also work like happy surprises and stuff but if the energies are focused within like some problem space or some method of thinking then you can that is at least a coordinating tool because like well they said that it, it's supposed to work kind of like this and you can debate it then like there can be discussion yeah. around that container. Yeah, that's interesting. The, the been, layers yeah. of tooling also that, I mean, because I'm thinking about this relation to internet camera because the first week I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this would be awesome if there was this kind of interest and I'm like, no, no, no. No, yeah. You need to get figured out a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but like underlying tooling, for example, on the, on the technical side. So a lot of people started shipping 
uh, would have been called like, uh, I guess the label for it now is derivatives, not, not in like a okay. negative way, but just that's, that's what yeah, they're yeah. calling them. Um, of like, all right, here's, here's a, an expansion pack that will give you like character traits or whatever. So same exact mm -hmm. format. Each card is linked to a specific loot, like bag ID. Um, but the idea right now is that people who own loot bag IDs or own loot can go to that contract, claim that derivative, and then own that NFT, which means that everybody is like spending gas on that stuff. Um, they have to pick and choose which ones to spend on. Uh, and then uh, if I were to go and sell my original loot bag, it doesn't come with that derivative yeah. that is supposed to be an attachment. So mm. like that is an inherent design flaw in that Dom shipped this contract that is like, hey, here's how to do on-chain SVG generation. Here's a bunch of like strings that anybody can just come and you know modify. You don't have to know any solidity, but you can redeploy this contract like easy, right? Like it's it's the form of like taking somebody else's MySpace HTML and CSS, modifying it to fit your own needs. Like it's mm. that level of accessibility. But what that's now created is that there's dozens, potentially a hundred or hundreds now, like I haven't really been keeping up of these derivatives. So Dom is now in the builder's channel, like putting up proposals of like, hey, what if we just had a registry contract? So nobody ever had to mint their derivatives, but they could just say like, hey, here's my bag ID, show me all the different like things that I can get. And they're all yeah. synthetics essentially. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing of like, had, had that synthetics and registry infrastructure been set up, you know, even a week yeah. prior to launching something, how different yeah. would conversations be going right now? So I, yeah. I think like, as much as I love the idea of like building a thing, surrendering it to the world and letting the community kind of build yeah. it, you know, from the ground up that way, you got to give them enough tools that like, it, it, pe people need those railings to like stay within to some extent yeah. to like build together. Otherwise they're going to go out in every single direction. It's going to be pure chaos. Yeah, and it almost that seems, I mean, this is getting into the consensus challenge where like everyone involved doesn't necessarily have to agree, but there's usually some like, not just dumb, but some community of people that are, they are the people that sort of came up with the premise in the first place to shepherd it into, like, it's like a child. We're going to raise the thing until it's big enough to do it on its own. Yeah, because people can help shepherd that too. But if they don't, if there's no one like sort of tasked with that in the beginning, and, and even if they were, but they didn't know what they were tasked with, it could still be the same problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so the village is... structure to raise the yeah. kid. It takes a village yeah. and well, you meet, but the village has to exist and has to be like a concept. Like that, the, and there is a way to uh, like a minimum technical structure, a minimum philosophical structure, a minimum social structure to, yep. to, to be able to like sort of, and it can be thing. basic scaffolding, you know, but yeah, anyway, sorry, John. Yeah, I guess maybe we're just kind of asking like what would loop chapter one or season one look like? And yeah. in, in doing so, like, what, what does that say about the possibility of season two, three, and four? Whereas yeah. now it's just this continuous thing. Um, it's like, flying somewhere very fast but in lots of different directions at once yeah i feel like almost amidst the chaos it's kind of distracting from the more underlying things that i think technically are very yeah. interesting and i think that's being highlighted a little bit in this conversation as well as like the synthetics point. are a, 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 like quite incredible innovation in the space i would say and i think maybe not immediately people are aware of that but like i think moving forward that's going to be like pretty awesome because it, it gives everyone essentially a set of some like basic properties that you can just keep playing with it to like your heart's content and that's like a great starting place for initializing any kind of game i think mm. it's like that that's like yeah. a, a really like that's this is your base set of armor or whatever that you start with for this game yep, yep. from there you can go and trade and do whatever you want mm -hmm. with other people um and and i guess the the high like the second point on the registry of things is like we i guess we wouldn't have found that out unless loot did happen like almost the chaos did need to ensue and the game needed to be played yeah. and put out there to figure out okay like what what does need to happen like for for future games or to have a like more long-term game or something that involves more of the community because it seems like at least as far as i can tell from dom's intent like he he wanted to make it only the gas price to keep the barrier of entry low and then just just because of the limited supply it like became crazy yeah essentially. yeah and and the builders that like decided to build on top of it like that that's 
that's what really made it. Yeah, yeah, it's, I think, it would. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just real quick, I think the issue becomes that, like, let's say he ships this registry contract now that prioritizes synthetics in some way. Everybody who shipped something that didn't follow that format is now going to feel a little bit like, wait, what? Like, I have all yeah. these people that like just spent money goals. potentially getting getting my stuff, and now it's incompatible. Huh. Um, which I don't know. I mean, is the solution just like a testing, <laughs> like peer, a period of time where you test with a group and learn these things? In, yeah. a, in a slightly more mm. controlled environment, like yeah, I think this is the pre-press stuff. Like, if you're yeah. gonna have a big active world like this, you need yeah. test nets. You need you need like fields of play where you can play with the potential staking uh, or stakes, rather. Like y you know, and then before you push it to main, um, if you're Petri gonna dishes. have such a broad, what's that? Petri dishes. Yeah, mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see what the like the 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 types of behaviors that are emerge in these things. Um, working with gold directly, <laughs> like it's your most, it's you know, risky. It, yeah. it, it it people are terrified of it. They don't want to touch it, and the, they hoard it. Like it kills yeah. creativity <laughs> because it's too precious. So you need oh. something that is the synthetics are a good concept, right? Like, you know, they have the properties of gold, but they aren't gold. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's like, it, it, there's like a separation of the creativity or creation from the market forces. That's the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pre publish pre workspace, create, like be creative, however you want. And once you've done that creative work and the thing is out in the world, it has a, its phase two. Like there's another thing that happens now where it can go do things that are different than the creative space. It can be traded. It can be, it can accrue value because it, it is really hard to work on something. If you know, if there's pressure, like this thing is worth yeah. a lot of money or it's going to be, if you can put like, no one likes working like that. I mean, maybe some, I don't know, but it's <laughs> very small amounts very of fun. people who are, yeah. No. It's not sustainable either. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's the possibility that you just like getting the material into the world, right? Like we, we've, we've started to realize that we can print gold. Like there is the possibility based on interest and alignment with energies in the universe <laughs> that wish to be expressed. Like we can dream monetary substances into the world. So this is the, the sort of working with that stuff directly, like can be socially hazardous because it is inherently connected to sociality, which means that creating like tooling that can simulate it, right? Uh, to try and get a, a, a lesser effect potentially, or like working with the concept of potential, um, like, you know, when, when, if this is an enacted for a reason of play, and then it is pushed into gold, that is what makes it value. So anyways, it's like yeah. creating, a, I don't know if this metaphor works completely, but like it, it, it's 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 showing up somehow. <laughs> yeah, the the one I'm I'm getting a little bit of is like you need like gloves and tongs to like work yeah, with yeah. This stuff. Otherwise, you're just gonna mm. get burned. Kind of like radiation, yeah. kind of like uh, mm. just like really ultra hot lead or something. Um, totally. But it does. It's not bad or good. It's just like powerful stuff that you probably want. What some, it does. Some level of like coordination around to to do right. Yeah, and it it has the properties that it attracts VCs. Yeah, like, oh, what do you got? <laughs> they, because they like working with this stuff. They're good at it, right? So is there a role in the system that like they have some ability, but they don't like, this is all mine. You want a little? Okay, that's fine. You jump through these hoops, monkey. Like, it doesn't work that way anymore. We can all grab the stuff. We can all play with it. We can make a new one, you know? So like, it's better if we all work together though. Like to, yep. to, to dream this, the, the, the resolution on the dream goes higher, which is more fun for everybody. So, yeah, I don't know. I just had the thought of like diverting VC attention by giving them something flashy. And they keep, <laughs> like if they're like, ooh, we got a big one. And everyone's like, they're busy now. Let's go work over here. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Accurate. Give them like some hyper insane uh, like degenerate trading thing that's wildly competitive and, and like know, super like, complex to even figure out and once they figure it out 
the thing detonates or something. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we're just and then we're like, all right, we made our thing. So now we'll invite you because it's post, like we're it's in ready. phase two. Help us market <laughs> it. And they're like, what? Where did this come from? <laughs> I want to set up a series, like a, a series of landing pages that just like hype people up on the absolute most like money making potential kind of stuff, but have yeah. absolutely zero thinking or product behind it. Yeah, because VCs it's love possible. landing pages without product. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, the, my, my, my hope is that we can figure out a way to have those be like a VC attractor, and then you can convert them into being able to play because uh, there is like stuff that Funnels. they understand about like yeah. the material Market that we flows. don't get but right yeah. now they are uh, uh they seem to be more of a problem than than a help so I'm, I'm hoping that we can meet some of these people that that have like some philosophical alignment mm -hmm. but yeah we will yeah I, actually i thought it was kind of a good sign i, I wrote down just a, a minute or two ago like it, i'm kind of surprised like given the space and like how crazy this is like how we haven't made any money because if we really wanted to like it'd be very possible i know <laughs> like, we were like, talking about this yeah, or like, yeah I, i'm right. like i'm fine like i don't want this kind of crazy like, crazy attention like this is too much like hearing There's about the thing. it is like oh gosh <laughs> making smart money is better like making like money that 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 wanted to be made not money that that was manufactured based on you know stealing faith effectively like because when you do this that money spends poorer like the whole thing around it managing it getting it the people who want to play with it like yeah. the the more extractive it is the more like it's taking advantage the more likely the people who are involved in running it and playing with it are people you don't want to play with like and it, it, it will just recreate that kind of thing over and over and over again it's tempting though <laughs> like because yesterday you know this, these goofballs put out this like you know blog thing that's like hosted on the blockchain it makes no sense it's just a bunch of components that they toss together that with the scarcity thing and then i go look at the wallet and there's like 50 eth in there like People are just dumping money in it because they're like, this is an NFT thing. And there's some interesting stuff that they're doing. It's not that, but cohesively as a mm -hmm. game, it, it yeah. makes no sense. Like we could do one of those. Yeah. <laughs> like easy. On their <laughs> Twitter, why? there's conversation where one person is trying to make sense of the feather NFT thing. And yeah. you can get a feather NFT for free, but it's locked up. You can't trade it. If you pay for it, you can trade it. And this person is asking the question, why did you do that? Now the artists who are you are trying to incentivize to get a free thing don't get to participate in any of the economic play of this at all. Mm. Just the people yeah. with upfront money do. And someone that from the entity like putting it out was saying, well, you can still join for free and like put your artwork up. And he's like, yeah, but you can't trade or participate in like the movement of the thing. Like, what's the point of that? It's just a, not yeah. a good design. Like, I don't know why they did that. Like, I mean, they, they have the tech sitting there and there's interest in the environment and this is their best shot at it. It's fun. These, there's a bill, there's going to be lots of these, right? Yep. It's just, there's so much energy floating around that it can grab like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of ether <laughs> like from because so yeah uh, you know in, in an environment like that it is harder to keep your head if you're sitting on something of value if you don't have it, like an orientation towards building something that will over the long term be beneficial for lots of people like it's easy to get pulled into the fomo or the like whatever the, these sort of energies because it's it's captivating right um, mm -hmm. but it can be a letdown, <laughs> like, because ultimately most people want to live in a world where the, the stuff that they're interacting with, like it, it has meaning it, somebody cared about it. Somebody built it in a way that, that is affording more. So balance. I mean, I had a bunch of this, this week, I'm just like, oh, fucking, there's so much stuff to play with and you can make a bunch of money, which is a fun thing to do. But why, like, I, I just keep asking why, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to make this kind of money? Like we have this bigger project, 
We have this like doodle game thing, which is an expression of it. Like, you know, we don't need to go faster than we're going right now. Like it's better to like think about this stuff without overthinking it and then get something out so that we can find the type of people who want to play the type of game that we want to play in the future. So like, we don't have to carve it all off and make it a scarce thing and, you know, like have it be like add extra gravity to it because the energy is in the system. We're looking for specific kinds of energy that, that yeah. will gravitate towards us because we're doing something hopefully that is in an alignment with the like future development of this stuff. So that one has been a wrestling match, but I think I've come out on top of it. I haven't made a single penny. <laughs> 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 There's no reason why we can't take in money, so we should have a treasury somewhere. Of course. By the way. Yeah. yeah. I think that, that that's part of the challenge of this is designing like economic levers that are that are like providing more fun within an ethos, mm -hmm. right? Like this is how we've thought about this. We may get it wrong, but that's fine. You can tell us and we can work with it because we've got a minimum social structure to be able to funnel the energies like that are coming back when we make a stupid economic decision, which we will, like, we don't know, we barely, I mean, we kind of know what not to do a little bit. Maybe. Yeah. Every, Maybe. every day is a new, new thing to learn. It's, it's, it's truly, like, truly, I mean, it's nuts. Uh, this something I've, I've been curious about uh, in terms of money coming in, uh, would pursuing like any sort of grants foundation type funding, um, preferably the kind that's really like low strings attached, like, hey, you're building like social decentralized stuff. Here's like 100K. Mozilla's running some of this uh, right now. I've been like keeping an eye on it. Is that like, because it's, it's a very different type of money to VC and it's also earlier than like actual uh, transaction based stuff. Um, is that sort of a conversation that we'd want to have? I think so. Is it in alignment with what we are trying to do generally? Right. Yeah, so like, that's the question. And how many um, hoops do you have to jump through? Yep. yep. All right. So my thinking on this is, so we have relational, we've been talking, I mean, this gets us into little next steps and what we we're talking about anyway, with the doodle stuff. So the, Exquisite land is just an expression, like a little fractal that, that like can attract a certain type of person. We've got a, a bit of the mechanics. It seems like the tech stuff is available. Like it's, it's sitting there waiting to be grabbed. Right. Um, and then we all sort of care about the, the, the kind of things that we can learn from it. Um, this gets us, uh, this gives us an ability to attract, uh, both builder types, social types and creative types, you know, and probably a few other types in there. Um, and we can, we can like, based on the stuff that we've been hypothesizing about for months and months and months, especially the social stuff, we can put some of that stuff into action. I think through the process of doing that, we are going to have a better idea of the kind of thing that we want to be a part of longer term mm -hmm. at the point that, that, and especially if it takes, it, it takes in some way. And we prove that there is the social alignment in building tooling through game play. And we have this like understanding version of it where we're teaching and on top, you know, we're openly like trying to, 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 to co-create this thing together. Um, we've got a first like sort of case study of the type of thing that our methodology can, can and wants to build. Right. Yep. At that point, we, we can be like, this is kind of our operate. We don't really know. Like we, we know this much. And there is some tangible representation that has like some value in the world. So at that point, we, we also we, we do our sort of prompt game to figure out like, you know, what we're all thinking about this. I think money is a part of that. We have like a, more of a visionary structure, like, you know, relational is the kind of place that does this kind of thing through these kinds of activities. And we would like to expand it in a way and here is what the that type of money if there is money out there that looks to be al aligned with that mission and the you know then we have to figure out what the expectations on all that is for us and for the money and whatever but we have an open cut dialogue about that kind of thing then we should be like as we have this conversation the money will show up like we'll find the things that we are like this grant seems to be in complete alignment with the way we've been talking about like funding an endeavor like this, right? So 
I think that, that, that we trust the idea that if we bring it up as a conversation piece in relation to what we're doing, then we'll find a way to on-ramp the type of money we need to continue the work. So that's abstract and, and sort of large, but, but I think that's where I feel we are. <laughs> you guys can push back on any of that. No, that sounds, sounds like basically, you know, as a group, we're going to be like, Hey, like, here's this little thing, put it out. And like the people that get excited about it, there's going to be people that are excited about it on like many different dimensions. One of those dimensions yep. is like offering resources to create more of that thing. Um, yep. but it, it, it like channels it and, and gives people a context through which to, to talk to us, uh, about what it, cause like having something with a URL is mm -hmm. very tangible. I mean, for, for almost anybody, it's like, yeah, yeah. Here, 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 go look at that. And then, and then like, um, conversations get a lot easier than trying to describe what might exist at a URL in the future. Yeah. I think that we are not too far off of that for sure. Like depending on how we can focus our energies and if this thing comes together and, and who we start playing with, um, which we yep. are not. And if there is a, a, a financial component, which I think there should be to this game, like that is also an indication of, of maybe where we are in the process here. But I think in the next month, we'll probably have this understanding. Um, then it's a question of what is the sufficient amount of money and of what type to bring into the system so that we can like express the next round of play um, with a complexity so that we can continue to build in this, this, like, this structure that we're building um yeah i i whatever it is there it's got a nature or whatever so yeah i would like to bring in some amount of ethereum <laughs> get paid like in ecosystem play. cash yeah that too yeah <laughs> that, that's to play. all that that's all that i'm really here for it's like how could i please continue to play this because playing this has been the most fun and i think at least for me i i guess like starting to tap into some of those questions i was writing here is like hopefully allowing other people to play in similar ways. So it's just like, hey, yeah. come, come play, come contribute and, you know, do what's fun for you and what, what's beneficial to the community or what you see is beneficial to the community. You, you'll get paid something reasonable because we're able to pay something reasonable and yeah. you can live your life how, however you want in, in order yep. to make that happen. I think like, at least that's the point of view that I, I'm coming from. Yep. Sounds right. I think the prompt exercise and the experiments will help us understand who we are and what we're doing because yeah. we have some sense of it, but it's been hard to articulate because these things are hard to get at. So having an awareness of who we are in relationship to the world is like a next step from there. So it's the foundational thing. If we have a foundational sense of who we are, what we stand for, what we are trying to achieve um, up until this point. I think that's a good launch pad into money. Cause part of like, I just wrote down buzzard versus relational treasury. Like they're two separate things, probably. Mm -hmm. How are they different? And I was like, well, how yeah. do you define that if you don't know what buzzard is as compared mm -hmm. to relational, relational? Like, so yeah, it's understanding our relationship to the work. It's yeah. Defining our sense of like self as entity, as squad. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Just really, really light things, easy. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> it, it's not an easy lift though. Like it's not like a really straightforward thing to do. Otherwise everyone would do it all the time. I am this and this is what I'm doing. And it would be easier to make money too. Cause once you, I think once you have some of the sense and you put the beacon out in the world, you can find and that and then the alignment of money to what you're doing because it helps if you have that foundation when money comes knocking on your door or you go knocking on money's door to see how much of it your understanding of who you are has to change to get the money mm. there's always a little bit of yeah. like um is it worth our time and what's the relationship with who's offering the money that kind of thing totally yeah i I, my goal with this is that there are no hoops. There is so much money. It wants to find a place to, to like be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> so like if we are staying true to the types of things that we want to build these sort of common infrastructures and then 
fun tooling on top of it and like an SDK to give to people so that they can do the same so that we can, you know, fill up the blockchain <laughs> with interesting shit. <laughs> uh, I think we're, we're fine on that front. So then it's just a question of, you know, what, how we want to be able to do that and, and, you know, what our day-to-day -day looks like and how many other people can play and, and, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. Those kinds of questions, I think we, we can, we can just keep, like we keep doing our experimental thing and then figuring out a way to reflect on the experiments. And then that is an offering out to the world. This is what we're doing. Uh, you know, it look interesting rather than making a marketing page that has like no substance and no soul, but yeah. looks shiny. Right. Yeah. Because it, we're, we're privileging the idea that there is actualized value that we have, we have like planted seeds grown up and then like picked and it, you know, we could, we're choosing not to gloss that up a lot. Like we're just offering it as it yeah. stands in the way this that is it what is. We, yeah. I like that. And like, you know, that gets us people who can sense the thing. Like I, I hope, um, you know, there's craft in that too, obviously. Like yeah. we want to make a nice one. So. Yeah. I mean, in an ideal case, the description of like, the back end of exquisite land or even honeycombs is like very boring. It's just, it's just yeah. like, here's the schema. Here's the flow chart of how the data goes. Here's how it works. That, that, that like, that should be enough. Don't need to draw any future scenarios for people They can fill those in themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then like how we went about it and what we, what we struggled with when we launched it and how we, you know, how that structure came to be huh. through the process of us talking about what we want That's to see important. in the world. You know, that yeah. part of it, I think, is because the yeah. tech is all there. It's how you arrange the tech in relationship to the world that you want to build. Mm -hmm. So, like, because there are a lot of people out there who can build this stuff, right, and want to build yeah. this stuff. It wants to be built. But, like, it's more fun to build in, in these ways that where there's, like, a, a direct understanding of the meaning that you're creating. Um, yeah. Mm. But we all have to, we all have to like contribute into the pot to be able to have that thing make any sense to people. Um, so it's, it's about, it's this collective voice thing. I mean, this is the fractal of what we're trying to do. Like if you can give your, your collaborative, your, your squad, your, your DAO, like a coherent voice through the activity of doing this kind of thing, experimenting, yeah. dialoguing, you know, playing games, doing understanding stuff, then it will be a beacon to the outside world for people who want to like play in this sort of way. So I, mean, I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm on a rampage right now. Good. So pragmatics, I guess, is where we're at. <laughs> um, that, so the mapping stuff, I didn't see what you said actually. The, I just looked into the library very briefly, like right okay. before the call started. I, I need to go through the rest of the links, but it looks like it's just part of another larger library, but that also okay. has some kind of drawing capability. So it, it could be another thing that we just have to kind of wrap, wrap a React component around it or something to, okay. to yeah. make it a little um, bit more like cohesive. Yeah. So there, I mean, there are things that will get stuff on a canvas and then like we can move around that canvas. Uh, People have solved this general problem in mapping. So there are tons of like map setups, I guess. This one where I, I don't know which one makes the most sense or which is easiest to, to sort of play with. I grabbed some that like appeared to have a lot of toggles and uh, aren't too opinionated, but it's hard for me to tell without like having built with any of these things. So, but it seems like I think you guys would have to like sort of skim them to see like how extensible or heavy duty they are lack thereof um yeah, so d3 yeah, anyway. which is the uh the library that is this freehand drawing tool that c data shared and then i think that's one of the maps yeah. that you you shared um that's like kind yeah, of I like an so. all-purpose uh um like graphing and charting and and mm. data viz kind of library it's yeah. super powerful super flexible but you do have to you have to think about the underlying svg a lot 
Like you're, you're okay. dealing with those kinds of primitives. So if we want something higher level, that's a little bit less flexible, probably easier and quicker to work with, but D3 would let us customize to our heart's extent, but would just be a mm. little bit more like in the weeds on it. Got it. Yeah. So the, the, the ideal scenario, how I would cobble this together and I'm naive at this, so that may, <laughs> I was just thinking about like taking the, the nifty thing or the react canvas draw, and that's in one interface. And then there is something that is printing the SVGs out to some mapping interface. Um, and those are tiles. And so they have the X, Y stuff. Uh, some of these things seem to take images and, 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 you know, whatever else. And then each one of those squares could be clickable and that would open up the canvas and it kind of knows where it is on the, I, how much that is, ha that's how I would hack it together. <laughs> I don't, there are probably a million better ways to go about this. I guess there could Say be it like again. So the, just so I can wrap my head around it, nifty or some other react draw app, right? Yeah, and it's and that it, pipes into uh, like what's the how do you port it over to the other thing to the canvas? It, I well, I, but, go ahead. I, I, I think, like, at least from what I caught, what you're saying, Dave, is basically like you're really only going to be drawing in this one interface. So when you draw, like, you're po popping something open, it opens the drawing interface, it, it outputs the S or it, it's going to output the SVG. And then now the SVG is on a larger page yeah. and maybe you compose SVGs or whatever. And a different library is going to handle the zooming or like map view or, or whatever from. Yeah. There. So in the big views, zoomed out view, you're really not editing anything. You're kind of just going from that like exploratory view into the full screen, one tile, like editing view, um, if, editing, if you have access, maybe it's also just kind of like a full screen viewer, uh, for when it's already drawn. I can think of one really like maybe janky hack that is like even less complicated than a library is like literally just rendering a bunch of these SVGs and tiles like they're just image tags on a page. And when you click the image tag, it pops open the thing, but it, then you can just pinch and zoom like directly with the browser, browser's native interface. Um, it's a lot less like uh, maybe like functional UI from like the user's point of view, but at least like as a bare, bare minimum, it could, it could work. Yeah, yeah. I need to see what it feels like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that I, plus, I, or go ahead. Go ahead, Trace. I was going to say the, this React zoom pan pinch that Dave shared, seems like it'll take any kind of input that we give it. So we could lay out yeah. all of our SVDs in those like, you know, image grid essentially, yeah. Opt, wrap that into this. And I think we get, like what well, you know a basic version of, of what we're talking about yeah yeah because it would be good if we had all the native like movable mm -hmm. zoomable mm -hmm. whatever features but that mm -hmm. to be able to like and also be able to query each of the things so you could drop to a place on the map um from a url uh okay. because then people could share their spot on the thing or whatever and then yeah then the next yeah. Is there a multiplayer on this and can you see cursors and all that other stuff? I don't know yet, but, um, but yeah, being able to, I, I'm sure, I don't know. We'll try those things seem seems reasonable, composable, but yeah. And then UI wise, there's a bunch of stuff we can do with the, like you click into it, it just overlays it, nothing hops around or whatever. It can look pretty seamless. Like we can mm -hmm. fudge all that stuff pretty well. Yeah, and then all the UI shows up around it when you click. Yeah, this one it's fine. It should. Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean at least looking at it too, the URL thing that you described with that other library, the Zoom React Zoom kind of pitch thing. It looks like you mm -hmm. should be able to like just plop in the coordinates essentially and have it go. Yeah. Nice. Potentially at some zoom level, I can't quite tell. But I'm mm. guessing there is like some zoom level kind of thing there too. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Because then we've got we've got our satellite, <laughs> you know, our Google Maps. Yeah. Looks like it should be that. Yeah. So then each one of these instant we just have the instances that are canvases then um, that are structured somehow. Yeah. Um, 
I guess we don't have to build the whole thing right now. Um, so, so yeah, I guess we were back to, to like sort of how we want to stick all this stuff together or like what we want to get prepared when we're going to do it, what, whatever. Uh, Chris and I talked a little bit about potentially kicking it off over the weekend, like sort of working distributedly. And then when everybody's here, uh, doing more in person stuff, but if that, if that schedule works, if not, I mean, it's just a, it's one throwing it out there. By distributedly, you just mean like geographically, but still yeah. like sync based stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's kind of what I was picturing too. Yeah. Yeah. I think Sunday is uh, like, it's completely booked for me, but Saturday right now is like open. Yeah. Okay. So. Right, yeah, so basically, I mean, we want to start in the morning and then <laughs> just keep jamming it till people fall over uh, <laughs> and then see if anybody else wants to come play. I'm uh, so curious, like how much is going to get done on this Saturday if we're just on call <laughs> for the whole time. Like, yeah, I feel I mean, like a lot could get done. This it's is possible. true. This is very true. Either a lot or a lot of like great conversation. What? <laughs> Either way. Either way. The win-win. So Mission who accomplished. else? Who else were we thinking about inviting? I feel like the one person is Scott. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there other people? Like, how do we make that decision? Like, how many people does it? How many people do you need? Like, hands-on for this? Because I would assume it at some point it's too many. I mean. We're not at that point right now, but I guess depending on like the scenario, it could be like kind of breaking people off into pairs too, if it becomes like too many people. Where now, now it kind of splits that and just like let the two brains kind of or three brains or whatever kind of do the things together um, and bounce ideas so like in a more like smaller, smaller session itself. I was also picturing a bit of a secondary like lobby um so there's there's maybe like a core building interaction that's happening which is really people that are like really only thinking about the thing and then there's a little more of like a couch watching lounge mm -hmm. hangout like chat uh play with the thing any versions that are coming out um that overflow could go into because i, I really yeah do think mm -hmm. like too many chefs in the kitchen would get chaotic uh yeah. but Andrew uh, Bugera, like uh, texted me after watching part two and he's like, oh, I'm down to like, just hang out and like watch and, and oh. chat about it. Um, Arthur's kind of in that space as well. So that feels like a nice place. And then from there, you know, if somebody really is just like, oh yeah, I, I have an idea for, for that, they can kind of get pulled in maybe. And that way it's, it's not super overwhelming if, if there's like a little bit of an influx of attention there. Yeah, I was thinking similar for the Discord, trying to do like the most minimum, I sketched out some notes for what it could look like. And this would be a separate Discord server for relational projects. And this would be the first one. So there'd be like a category of channels for exquisite land. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. one was like, I think, cause without designing more than we need like having a home base sort of channel for exquisite land which is also social is a good starting point and then builders. And then we could see from there like we can spawn off new things. Another one that we, Dave and I thought might come up as help, like once it's out in the world, yep. but to start, maybe it's just totally. channels. Um, and on top of that, some additional channels for like the broader, like relational, like who the hell is it that's putting this thing on, but cool. This sounds perfect. Yeah. yeah I'm doing it live, <laughs> effectively. <laughs> like we're building the home and then the first project in the ecosystem that is in the public yes. you know so like the i think that it's similar to how we started recording these things like we don't know what we're doing we just get together and record it we don't know what we're doing here's a discord we know that we want people to hang out in the discord we have a sync yeah. we have our first game we're building yeah. the thing you can watch along it's building on what we've already done i think it's good we have like four pillars and a bit of a roof to keep the rain off we're just saying like <laughs> we need to build the walls and like fill this place with things uh but we've yeah. got a campfire going so come come join mm -hmm. us it's enough the rooms will make themselves yeah basically yeah mm -hmm.
<laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> this makes sense. Um, um, I guess one thing that comes up then is it like, is the main output YouTube or Discord live? Uh, yeah. The pros and cons to, to, to both. And are we I think it, trying to record everything? Like what's the, I guess either way it would too. work, but yeah. It would be really cool. It gets a little complex to manage if we're doing like breakout rooms of like, all right, a yeah. couple of us are gonna go over and work on contracts and like dig in deep on that. And it'd still be mm -hmm. cool to be able to record all of that, like every yeah. room basically. Yeah. But it's tricky. Can you beam that stuff to YouTube? That's where we talked about the multi-channel stuff where for like yeah. live sports stuff, um, apparently, mm -hmm. but there's oh, yeah. probably a capability for that. The question is like, does that all have to go through one box or can multiple boxes stream to YouTube directly into one stream? I'm unclear on that. Yeah, I don't know how that works at Not all. Not into so... one stream. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you would need something. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how would you do this? There's so how does the Sharuz, you've set up lives? Have you set up yeah. the live streaming to YouTube? Like how how what how far did you get until that? Okay, so so there's like some service that does this. That well, I so I'm using it. OBS on my machine. Okay. And then OBS is, has a bunch of like scenes and triggers, so I can like jump to any specific app or like you mm. know focus in on a specific section. OBS can take any RTMP URL, which is just a, a regular URL, um, and stream it to that. So that's the interface that YouTube gives. That's the interface that Mux gives. Uh, Twitch, mm -hmm. any any streaming thing will ingest through RTMP. Um, but it's per machine, essentially. So like OBS needs yep, to be running. Yep. I mean, theoretically, you could have multiple instances of OBS pushing to multiple RTMP streams. But you do enough of that, and you're not going to be able to do anything else with your computer during that no. time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's possible to have like some RTMP stream that everyone goes to, and or like that it's splitting out multiple. Like it's, I don't know. Maybe you can have like OBS, which has a bunch of these RTMP streams coming into it, and then that is like mm. the mixer and sending it out to the final RTMP stream out to out to YouTube or, or whoever. I don't know if there's any projects doing this. I feel like I've, I've looked at this like maybe years ago and there was something about this. And I think I might've tried setting up something like this before. It seems like a problem that makes sense to have a solution. Yeah, I've seen plenty of like hardware mixers and stuff. We used to use them a lot at like Super Deluxe, but software over the internet, um, to mix RTMP, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen. RTMP video mixing over over the wire. That sounds like a cool tool. I think we may be too early on this one. <laughs> or um, the demand might be out there, but we yeah. stumbled so into one, one that, that we're, yeah. One structure that like is pseudo gets us this is at least for the more uh, like busy parts is uh, combined Discord and YouTube where Discord screen share is just the thing that's getting capped on one machine and that's blasting it over to YouTube. Kind of gets us the benefit of both because uh, chat and stuff could happen in Discord for the most part. So that it's like really close to the video. And then YouTube is more of the archive and like the final output stream. Um, so really that just means one device is like running with Discord open. Um, I mean, during Interact, I think we, uh, Sav was like running a similar setup. This mm. would just be mostly uh, autonomous and just running the whole day. Feels like that could work. So walk me through that one. So, so say you have like two uh, channels and people are working in each channel. Like how does- You could have two yeah, locally run- Yeah, it still run... forces one channel it Crap, go ahead. <laughs> yeah i can ask the... put this on the to-do yeah should i ask the landlord about internet stuff 
I mean, I don't know that you can upgrade yes. for a month. You well, usually they are in monthly billing cycles. So if we just say, hey, uh, if you upgrade, we'll we'll pay for the Delta just this month. That could work. You can try. She's not going to understand. She's going to be like, but it's really fast internet. And I'm going to be like, it's not, though. <laughs> <laughs> not when we have a cluster of Discord servers trying to be into yeah, YouTube. It's not. I was, I was just thinking, like, oh, oh man, if it can't handle this video up, like, up yeah. as it is. Yeah. Like, imagine it. trying to stream yeah, and not. record multiple videos. There's no way. On the same. No, 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 definitely. So I think for this one, minimum, we we are going to do it all in Discord. It's going to be hosted. People can come in and, mm -hmm. and watch it stream. Um, some amount of that, ideally, at least a general room can go out to to fully. If we can do per channel, like or per breakout, and those go into videos, that'd be great. Um, I think we should just, like poke at all that stuff. I'm curious to see what exists and how it how it all sticks together. Um, and then whatever is easiest that doesn't require any of us to like be a V guy constantly so that we can play. Yeah. Um, if it requires a lot of overhead on that front, I think that we ditch it for now. Um, we'll have other opportunities to do it. So. I agree. That, that's that why works. I was kind of thinking that like that default Discord stream just acts as like the the, yep. the main feed and then we have the option of switching it to like maybe another room if, if we want there's active attention there otherwise uh there's always just like one capture source happening because yeah. yeah i do agree that like having it like just running sounds a lot more fun than like act actively managing it yeah there's the role too of like narrator if you have like a, a you know one stream of the day you know and we, mm -hmm. we haven't done the broke broken out into like a hyper media yet it's just like all right i'm gonna go over here and see mm -hmm. what's happening here i'm gonna go over here and see what's happening there um kind of come back it's like a guy with a camcorder report like that to <laughs> yeah. know what's going on or whatever yeah or i imagine i'm not gonna have a lot of stuff you like hey look at this yeah, yeah yeah like i wouldn't mind bouncing around and sort of seeing what people are up to and then sort of asking questions or person can do that or you know yeah. so because I, I'm not going to be able to code a lot, so, yeah. Are you muted? Thanks. Yeah, I was just saying that I was going to code half the thing. Nice. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to let everybody know now, yeah. So it'll, it'll work in some, like, alternate, alternate dimension, but it won't work here. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it works. JavaScript on the spot. Exactly. It would be kind of funny to True pretend you know how to program, not in a this like setting, but I don't know. Like I know enough to like mimic it and just be like, here, let me show you around my like <laughs> code base. And everyone's like, what is this? Like you're just like it works. It works in my head. <laughs> Perfect. So the Discord as main stage and potentially multiple stages, we would use OBS to record, right? Yes, I think it's the easiest way to capture yep. what's okay. outputting into a Discord stream. Uh, they have like Twitch integration, but I don't think they have anything else. So that layer has to be a uh, manual. Well, That's beam it over enough. to Twitch and then Twitch can beam it to YouTube. <laughs> That's also probably an option. OBS will be like, pretty easy. Yeah. Um, yep. the, the 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 only thing is that you somebody is going to be driving the OBS stream essentially, yep. right? So whatever they're doing on their screen, they they're going to be driving yeah. it. Um, I mean, I wonder like if it just makes sense to have like a completely separate computer that's just driving it, especially like in person. If you just walk over to the computer and punch the button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. We're into virtual machine. It's really fast on. On fiber somewhere. Yeah, I mean, we could would record be... it if we have a separate machine. Just record it instead of streaming it, and then just upload it when we don't oh, need everybody smart. on the same internet. Yeah, yeah. overnight or whatever. It yeah. makes sense. We got some options here. I think. We, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's fool with this one. Um, 
All right. Yeah, it's almost like we can kind of just try things, and if it takes too long, we just say fall yeah. back to the easiest thing. It'll be fine. I mean, that's part of what we're trying to figure out is like the the like broadcast version of this, um, and like figuring out something that that's repeatable and and like yes. so that we can do these things in the future. So it's not like we have a huge audience or something, and we need to get this right this time. So we could fudge it. Hmm. Love the best best broadcasting software for a hackathon with five people yeah mm -hmm. it's like professionally <laughs> it's so pristine <laughs> studio quality <laughs> goes out in 8k that's the, for no reason that's the vc uh, funded five person okay. hackathon <laughs> exactly right that would be it we have an entire graphics package <laughs> 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 Retired baseball like announcer or something we hire <laughs> just for the event. <laughs> Dave could do this. It's Pete Rose. <laughs> oh, see, we're getting there. Why we need to make four hundred Ethereum on this thing? We can toss a <laughs> we can toss an Ethereum to to an aging star from the eighties. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> somebody has been crypto pilled over there a d-rate celebrity <laughs> poly shore we're gonna get poly shore it's gonna be great we probably could fool somebody by the way if we just throw a hackathon we need, we need an announcer somebody would sign up easily sure. you want a taste <laughs> of that crypto that sweet sweet crypto you'll come announce our our dumb project. <laughs> <laughs> We've got options. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? What else do we need to do? Uh, scaffold. This is like scaffolding stuff, right? Mm hmm. Um, mm hmm. Can you get the repo up like tomorrow? Just a minor repo room for our contracts from our front end. I think that's all I need. Cool. No. Nope. Uh, do you think we're going to need, need the graph as well? I think that would be a good oh, idea. Yeah. Subgraph as well. Yeah, that way. That way, you can do one query per canvas and just get all the SVG data direct. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That's clean. Oh, because it's all going to be built. To, like to the contrary, crazy that like IPFS the is just We're not going to be here. Launching. Yeah, I don't think we have That's any IPFS. Sweet. Yeah. I, I think we will when we do the. I mean, as, as wonderful as IPFS is, there's a lag. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. But yeah, cut, cut down on the dependencies for now. That's great. Do we need any, anything else? I mean, like, is there certain scaffolding that we want to do inside the repo otherwise, other than like just the generic structure? I think the generic structure and then maybe pre-playing with the pan zoom thing a little bit. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that, that seems like the kind of thing of like, if we're, if we're having to like figure out the best tooling for that in the first couple hours, it's going to be, mm -hmm. A bit of a slog, yeah. but it'll, it'll add some friction versus if we can just start going in and building functionality. Yeah, kind of just like yeah. to get a generic structure of the grid or something and just see see what what makes sense or like just like little basic SVGs, just load a whole grid of the same SVGs. Yeah, that and just, exactly. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and I'm happy to do, I mean, research or whatever on packages and go dig up stuff because I can do that much, but not much beyond that. Yeah, I mean, we've got the social stuff. Oh, yeah, we're going to clean up buzzard.life potentially here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we talked about just dating the posts, at least, in the date format so that they <laughs> list out properly. Um, yeah, I can do that. It's yep. tedious, but I'm happy to do it. Okay. Are they um, all in different formats, or we could do a group, or is it group editing session? 
like one format. I just I don't know if you know. I'm just curious. Like if it's just scriptable. The the dates are they all over the place? Yeah. It, yeah, there's right now we have a few. Like my posts, I got it because I built the thing and then like you know or structured it so that that date format is working. Um, like I forget what it is, some UTC, UTC thing. Um, so yeah, uh, but there's like a few others where like I think John, you put post date in with like just the uh, you know like March twentieth or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. So um, yep. so there's a few of those and then that's where it's at. Um, and then most of them have no date at all. Yeah, I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah. And the ones that don't have a date get dated for the current date. Yep. So it's hard to see like what what's new. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it feels like a mess. Yeah, we should be able to just look at the date that the file was committed to the repo. Use that date. Yeah. I think that's fine. It's like I said, it's tedious. It's best so. effort, yeah. I can also try to, there's like, I made some notes on this too, the game sort of overview, just clean that up a little bit and like tighten it a little bit. So it's just obvious like what happened and mm -hmm. why we were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and if we have time, I don't know if we wanna layer this in, but maybe we do at least one of the prompts about Something about like who we are, because we can come up with something like high level, but I'm just, I'm not sure if we want to layer in the prompting game to like start getting at some of the deeper stuff. Mm -hmm. It feels like it might be a lot right now. I mean, is this something that we're targeting before like Saturday or potentially on Saturday? I mean, I, I would be more than happy to start doing the prompts. I think it would be, it could be good at least to kind of like introduce things or maybe give provide some more like cohesive context. Yeah, I maybe we can kind of say that like the, one of the first intro prompts will be one that goes on the page towards the end of the week, but the rest of the prompts are going to stay like pretty internal until we we're ready to turn them into something. Or all of the responses are fair game for whatever that thing is, but we mm. won't do more than just the overview on who we are. Like we it won't go into mm -hmm. too much depth. We don't really need the website cleaned up until yeah, I guess. we go live. Mm -hmm. So we've got a little bit of time too. True. Yeah, I guess I may, may, maybe the, the prompts could be, well, I, I, I initially was thinking like, oh yeah, like from the, the hall of each individual person maybe isn't fun, but put combining it could be a little bit more work. But still, I think it would be a good thing to have. Uh oh. Yeah. What? Oh. I thought my screen just did something weird where all the windows closed. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought I lost Zoom. <laughs> she lost Zoom. Watch out. We got two Johns now. So, yeah. mm -hmm. John. Second John. <laughs> double the John, or double the fun. John. He cloned mm -hmm. himself. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we we can like, I don't know on the prompts. Like I'm I'm willing to, to write some stuff, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I figured that one I'm not sure on. <laughs> it's up to you, Kristen, I guess, and on what what you're pitching. Like, if you pitch a game, and then we all think that we can do it. So, like, the first prompt goes out like tomorrow, and then we have 24 hours to respond to it. That that was the, the yeah how that worked. Yeah, that was the idea. Um, mm, 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 mm. I mean, so, when I, do we I think we'd be launching this? Out the door. The exquisite land. Like when would it go live? Sort of depends on a lot, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think Saturday we'll we'll have a better idea of what what that's like. I mean, I think we'll get through what we can get through. See how much of the the, the like surface area like comes to us pretty easily, and if we have like a workable 
game or not. Um, Cause there's all, and then we have a bunch of, we still have a bunch of decisions to make in that process as it, as we hit them. So, um, cause there's the possibility that we could just launch one canvas or do we launch all 16 or, you know, are we going to do a test run with some group of people or, you know, who knows. Right. Um, yeah. You know, and, and it may be that we get it into a state that we can like do polish and get everything coordinated when we're all in person and then push it out the door there to people, which would be very fun because we're all in, in one place together and we get to watch it. Um, yeah. But if that doesn't happen, that doesn't happen. Right. I think we're, we're sort of, Okay. I think the soonest that, that it would be possible to do that would be like, what is it next Wednesday or something? But that's if everything sort of clicks and we nail it all down. Yep. But assuming that what if we did, makes sense technically. So we've got a, a fair amount of time. What if we did 48 hours per prompt so it's less pressing? Because like the, the lift on this shouldn't be a lot. Like you shouldn't have to be spending that much yeah. like time really focused energy responding to these prompts sure yeah yep 48 feels pretty calm thanks and i'll kind of prioritize the ones i feel like would be best and like if we need to pause it we can pause it okay yeah. perfect yeah i think it'll be good and then so we're just going to do those through discord yeah if that works we'll have one channel sure. for this game and then yeah, I'll just prompt every 48 hours with a new question. And you can, there's no rules against using, like responding to an earlier, like prompts responses, like John and I were talking about this. It's not like super necessary that you stay in the lane of that question and you can't respond to something before, nothing like that. Like it should be pretty yeah. light. Yeah, it's more like a drip feed for, the, the questions rather than like a cutoff time on the answers. Got it. Yep. Cool. Parallel processing. See how it goes. Yeah. For a um, bit of a tangent, but I wonder if it makes sense for Saturday to try and optimize for getting something like working end to end first mm -hmm. and then doing you know, session two or, or whatever as more of like, all right, let's make it like add all the bells and whistles, like the fun kind of surprises. And, yeah. You know, all that layer, yeah. I think, is it, if we, if we try and mix both of those at the same time, I think it gets, it gets hard to, to finish something in the first yeah. Totally. Yep. Yeah. I think a uh, minimal laughable, it's our input and uh, submit button. Like, yeah. 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 just needs to be strung together in a way that like we can see the pattern of it and it, you know, I'll stay away from everything. No politics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, CSS only. Yeah. 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 Um, no jokes. Let's, no one's allowed to say joke. No jokes. Yeah. <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's kind of like a prototype. We're making sure the data transfer stuff all makes sense, the token exchange, blah, blah, blah. Yep. And then, yep, yep. And then, like, and we'll, we'll have. We'll have like something sturdy that we can then go and decorate essentially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we've got the canvas that. to paint on like fractally as well as functionally, um, that stuff is pretty easy to, to pull together on. So cool. Yeah. I think we, yeah, I think we try to get this into like a one sheet or something too. Like maybe. Uh, that's what I was thinking. Um, even possibly what I was, eh, I don't know if we need to do maybe that before Saturday. Hmm? Figma? That could be nice. Because we can Canvas... just break it into. Yeah, Canvas feels nice because it feels like it's going to be sort of branching and it, like, yep. yeah, there's certain things that are more technical versus more social. We can sort of spread them spatially, which might help. Yeah. yeah, kind of imagining what our block V01 figment turned into, which is like this ongoing yeah. just place for yeah. uh, text and, and yeah, that, that sounds good. Okay, Figma as working document. And so yeah. we can get down like, you know, sort of what we're trying to hit, how we're trying to, so we can, if we all need reminding like, which I will, uh, 
the no polish rule, etc. CJ, I feel like I, I may have heard you say something, or I rather saw, seen you say something, but didn't hear it. Uh, I don't know if your mic is like working. No, I was just like making faces because I, okay. I thought you were just, sure just making I, faces. I wasn't <laughs> sure what one sheet what one sheet was, and I just got uh, confused, and I was trying. I know, like, rack my brain. Is it one note? Is it? Oh, sorry. It's a new app. <laughs> yeah. It's a new app. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay no. I was like... It's not. It's a the concept of like having a brief basically to go back to to okay. look at. Okay. Uh, okay. Like you know, it fits on one sheet, and anything more than one sheet, you don't do it. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. I like that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Like a a, a project Wait. white paper kind of thing. You basically wrote one of these out, I think, before one of our build sessions uh, with the yeah. block API stuff. More or less. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah, and I guess it can be a place where we just sort of toss schema information and you know, like functional stuff or any notes or something like this. Uh, yep. For now, I mean, if it works, we, we can figure it out. Yeah, and kind of evolving as it evolves live. Yep one place where we can look at all the artifacts of production for now. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. We only work on big unlimited canvases. We only build on them. We only yeah. put our notes into them. We're purist. Is there anything that needs mm -hmm. to go into like, is there a reason to spin up the separate Discord server now so that we can start adding things there and like having that be populated and like we could potentially invite Scott in there and Andrew and Arthur? Yeah, that could be nice just just to get like a like a you know a little bit of a space going there. Um, so we're not overwhelmed with stuff on to, to create on on the day. Of. Yeah, there are um, friends used too. to hanging out there. Yeah, yeah, yep. So. They could be like, what is, why are you doing this like this? This doesn't make any sense. And we're like, oh, shoot. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like low stakes. Mm -hmm. Totally. Some of that. What are we calling the server? Relational? Yeah. I think our other one is buzzard. Got our squad server and we've got relational. Just drop in the OS. Relational work for now. And if it wants to name itself something else, it'll do it. Yeah. Don't know. I can't think of anything else. I'm sure if anything else comes up, we can. Got a good system for dealing with unexpected questions. Yeah. It's doable. So got the technical stuff, got the social stuff, got our collab stuff, got a general working idea of what we're getting into, got an ethos for building it. Um, we need a soundtrack. Other than that, we're good. Soundtrack. Mm -hmm. yeah and then it's anybody who wants to play i guess that makes sense i can't think of too many other people but if anybody else comes up i guess we can toss it in there and see i'll message phil and see see what he's doing yeah cool sweet cool i got nothing else i'm ready I'm away Ready, since our, our single field and button. Mm, yeah. yeah. That was what, eight weeks ago or something? Mm. Yeah. That like, is if that. Is that it? Wow, I don't know. Whoa. Something like that. I mean, I don't know. Can't so, imagine it being too much more than that. No. It feels like <laughs> we're on another planet already. Yeah. That's it's, so <laughs> it's so funny because before that, it was like having no idea what at least for me, like no idea what's actually going on. And now it's like, oh, we've built a thing and we can build more things. And then, yeah, oh, yep. Just mess around with it and see what happens. Yeah. Well, already from doing that project, it was our first experiment 
like I've realized like the level of polish that I was adding is inappropriate to the task, right? So inappropriate. Like, <laughs> uh oh, he died. Yeah, inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> basically, like the so like the cycle on learning, like how to like play in the media has like it's so rapid. Um, oh. Yeah. Like this time around, it's obviously you just cobble the thing together and then you add the, you know, we're starting to figure out like how to do these things um, pretty rapidly. So I don't know. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I had this feeling earlier today. Uh, I'm like looking at, I, I think I mentioned this to John. Uh, like I'm looking at stuff on Twitter and people sort of talking about the things that they're working on. on and like even media projects that are pretty interesting, it, they seem like they're in slow motion. Mm. Like <laughs> they're they're so careful and plotting, or like, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, there is a there is a temporal, like distinctly temporal difference in the style of actuating these things. Like there is also an energetic difference between the people who are playing in these Web three things and and not. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it specifically is, but like, it just feels like they're walking in molasses <laughs> comparatively <laughs> for better or worse. I don't know that that's not a value judgment. It's just, it's sort of like, yeah. there is a dimensionality or like a, 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 like they just seem desaturated. Um, but yeah, that's something that's weird. Yeah. So yeah, we keep making holograms, I guess. <laughs> good, good plan. Cool. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say was, we just were, John, you were just reading this, this Jordan Hall put out a thing on NFTs that mm -hmm. like goes into a lot of the like characteristic structures and then does this macro move that like broke my head a little. Uh, I'll send that over to you guys. I think it's worth poking through. Uh, did I hallucinate or did you already drop that into I think you dropped it somewhere random maybe uh, did I a novel perspective on NFTs or something yeah that sounds right did I do that maybe Kristen did I don't think I did hmm. maybe not maybe, maybe I did it mm, could have relational yeah I just did that too no, maybe not. Drop it again. I don't know where to place the control channel. Fine. Yeah. Anyways, it's worth a read. It's wild. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention real quick is like those interfaces that are popping up from like Ryan Singer and then the draggable, droppable. Like all of these just decide to like come out this week. Um, it's just, I mean, yeah. Like Ryan Singer's been obviously been using those. He built it himself. Um, but yeah, the bucketing and renaming and, and all this, they're just blocks. And then the other guy's thing, he's just writing markdown files. Like he could make these things relational immediately. That that front end, like this is where I'm just like, oh, I don't need to make any front ends. Like I don't need to design any UI. <laughs> there yeah. are people who are just <laughs> doing this, like just evangelizing the block format so that they can get extra features out of the thing seems more and more like what I like to be doing. Because there are all these tool yeah. builders out there, and then like figuring out a way that we can work with them to get it in a you know something that I don't know. So there's some cult consultancy something play with artist kind of toolmaker things going on there. That was the other thing that happened with Pascal, getting him to think in the structure of like block making, and then like can you come up with a small game? that that like you might want to express through blocks as a substance you know or you know honeycombs or something like this um and he was like game immediately and all he's looking for is a group of people to like help him think out the stuff that he doesn't understand so i'm like yeah we can sit down if he because he had a he had a, a concept of a basically like a music instrument builder kind of thing and connected with some 3d kind of thing and because he understands both of those formats and then like what kind of game can be built there and then how can you use these things in alternate places or whatever like so what is the generative thing and 
then what is the game dynamic? Um, so he's got the building blocks and the technical stuff, like all the way down into the material, just needs to pull it together and then understand the contracts and, and what can be done on that front. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that we could collectively figure out little media games with like certain types of artists that, that helped, you know, anyway, so there's something there. Uh, I'm just getting that out into the collective brain. So, Sounds really fun. Yeah. I, yeah. And the more the like structure we build on this stuff, these things get easy to do. And if we have collaborators who understand how to build in the structure, then we just send them over there and then they can build it. <laughs> so uh, we can pick the ones that seem the most fun. So, yeah, I think we can do a, a toy camera too with film. I think that might be a, a fun to, mm. to like, see if we can connect the, the relational stuff with internet camera or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's another one. Little, little side, I know it's maybe like completely tangent, but you mentioned film. Um, mm. Trues, I just wanted to throw this out. Maybe I'll put it in an internet camera just or two if you'd like, but I'm very interested in like potentially building like a geofilm where it's like within like some kind of polygon radius nice. geo coordinates mm. um i kind of generically looked into it and i'm not totally sure how this is going to work yet like whether it has to be done on ipfs side or in the contract itself ideally like it would be pretty sweet to have in the contract itself but something something i'm thinking about uh and i would like to awesome. yeah give it a shot. throw it in there I, i'm hoping that the discord over time becomes more people being like hey i want to work on this and then other people being like, "Yeah, you should do that, and we'll help out." And, get and they can just make a squad. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Uh, yeah, CJ, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty down to at least like bounce ideas on that because I've been looking to like little bits and pieces from that foam protocol and just the way they're approaching like geo, their geo hashes or whatever, and like that. There's something here that is very, very fascinating. So, down to join any any chats. Yeah, I'd, I'd be very curious to chat about that too. I like very briefly looked at it, but I was like, oh, my brain is not like I get the geo hash. The rest of what's going on, yeah, yeah, yeah. way too much. Like I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it would be great to go through that. Totally. I built a, a little proof of concept uh, yesterday, um, <laughs> which is a loot camera. So it starts off with a black mm -hmm. screen, and then you can like point it at stuff. Um, And then it'll like detect what you're seeing. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, and then yeah, you get like rarity <clears throat> stuff too. So cup, you can see, you get the special one. But yeah, wow, Whoa. just messing around. <laughs> what 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 is doing the detection? Uh, TensorFlow JS. Okay, yeah. Wow. So it's all it's all device side, no APIs, like absolutely no Beautiful. network communications outside of minting the polygon. Um, beautiful ended up being like really i mean the tutorial <laughs> you know copy pasting did 90 percent of the work yeah yeah yeah, wow. yeah having these little That's like having amazing. a geo thing to play with <laughs> having a tensor flow thing to play with like recombining yeah. those into something that can be re you know i think they're we're just they're building a toolkit to make ridiculous apps here like yeah. i think it's great <laughs> tools to build tools yeah yeah yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy seeing like it. It seems like there's all these like new tools and technologies, and it's just like oh, just combine them in a new way. That's something emerges. yeah, it's yeah, pretty insane. Yeah, because you don't need to worry about the whole stack. You can just say I like that piece, yeah. that piece, and I just want those. You don't have to like worry about everything that has to support those in the typical arrangement. This is good. Cool. All right. What time shall we start on Saturday? Oh, yeah. Question. 5 a.m. <laughs> Wake up. All night early. Start roll right. out of bed. <laughs> yeah, 12 01. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, midnight to midnight. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what did you say? 10? 9, 10. Yeah, something. There. 9 or 10. That works for me. Okay. We can. 9 30. Split the difference. Perfect. It's a deal. Wow. We need to begin our coffee conveyor belt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to need it. Yeah. We should get a, we should do the thing that, you know, go to Einstein bagel, get a, like a giant carafe oh, like of coffee a box. and a yes. box of bagels or whatever. Yes. Uh, 
<laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, cool. Yeah. What? Well, one more like side side. Um, Sharuz and CJ, y'all are here basically like Wednesday through Saturday. Is is, is that my uh, Tuesday? I, Tuesday to Friday. Tuesday. Through Tuesday. Friday. Okay, so if we wanted to do some sort of like offline thing with uh, some of the people we've we've met here in Portland, really, I think the only day that would work, that works like Thursday night, okay. that Thursday night. Yeah. Um. So if we could just hold that date down as maybe uh, a placeholder, and then we can work out like the details of where and the, the how. But that way, we'll have something to send to other cool. people too. Ready? Sounds great. Buzzard in meat space. Dot <laughs> Com. It's official. <laughs> Red. Cool. So, right, cool. I, for one, am pleased about all of this. <laughs> and I say that we continue doing it because it's fun. I second that. Same. Yep. Whoa. It's <laughs> the proposal <laughs> <Yeah>. passes. <laughs> Two no, Cool. All right, guys. All right. Yep. Till whenever we do the next one. I don't know. Yep. Saturday. Saturday, I guess. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. All right. Unless we need something in the meantime. Cool. cool. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B